So I think you're going to like the authentication labs. This is the real classic hacking stuff where you brute force passwords. So here we are. Um, here's the first lab. And let me close these other tabs. All right, here's the lab. And as always, I launch the access button, which will take a minute. And OK, it's vulnerable to username enumeration and password brute force attacks. This is a very common flaw. And uh, all right, here we are. So there's going to be a, here is my account. That must be where you can log in. If I go there and I put in a username of like Fred and a password of Fred and log in, it tells me invalid username. But um, they always, there's an account they always give you, Wiener Heater, W-I-N-E-R. Might have spelled it wrong. In fact, it probably would have told me. There, W-I-E-N-E-R. And the password, I'm going to, going to put in a one. Now, it tells me, oh, still invalid username. Okay. So the point is, you're never supposed to tell the user whether they got the username or the password wrong. You're just supposed to say uh, you failed to log in. And so... Um, we know that there's possible usernames and possible passwords. And I think we have a list of 100 of each of them. So there they are. Here's the 100 possible usernames and here's the 100 possible passwords. And um, the point is it told me invalid username. So that means I can test a username without bothering to solve the password. Instead of having to do... 10,000 guesses, all possible of the 100 usernames and 100 passwords, I only have to do 200 guesses. First, the 100 usernames until it quits telling me invalid username, and then the 100 passwords until I get in. That's why you don't really give the, um, the uh, attacker this kind of information. So to do that, uh, we're going to take the list of usernames. I'll just copy them, 100 of them. And then we're going to perform a brute force attack on them. So let me go here and let's look at the solution to keep me on track. So we find the post login request and go to burp intruder. We haven't used the intruder before, but it's good, clean fun. So I did try to do a login. Let's go to the proxy and see if I can find that post login request or if I have to uh, clear everything. Here's YouTube. That's not going to be it. Here's a post. There's a post. And it looks like this is too annoying. Okay. Now here's a login request, but I'm not sure that's the right one. I'm just going to clear the history and do another login request now. So here I am there. So I need to put a username of A and a password of B and log in. Okay. Now let's see what that looks like in Burp. There it is. A post login request. And if I look at the request, there's my username of A and password of B. So this is the one I want to work with. So I right click and send it to the intruder. Now, at the intruder, here's what you do. You specify the payload positions here. So the sniper attack is what the most common attack, and that's what we're going to use. So down here, I want to tell it to vary the username. So I hide, first I clear all the section marks that might already be there. And then I highlight the parameter I want to vary, which is A, and I add section marks. So now that is a variable. It's going to load that. Now that I've chosen the type of attack and I've told it where the variables are, I go to payloads and I'm going to do the simple list where it's just going to try everything. And I'm going to paste in the 100 usernames I copied earlier. So now it's going to send 100 requests replacing that highlighted thing with this. And that's all I need to do. So I start the attack. And it's going to warn me that the community edition will slow down the attack just to punish you, which is why I say if you write a Python script, you can overcome this, or you can pay them a few hundred bucks to get the pro edition. And now it's going to run that attack. Um, I think it's already running in another window. Let's see. And maybe I need to start attack. Community edition contains a demo. So, oh, here it is. It's over here. 
It opened in another window. Yep. And, uh, hmm. Uh, all right. Uh, I think I've got two of them running at the same time. Let me just close one. There, I think this one is running. Okay. And the point is, here it is trying all these different payloads. Notice the status code and the length of the reply. And the simplest one of them is going to, usually, when you get in, the reply length will be different. Or the status code will be different. So it's done 44 of the 100 so far. Remember, they warned you it's going to slow it down just to irritate you. So it'll take a little while to get up to 100. And then I can sort by this. When one of them is going to have a different result, that'll be the one where the username is no longer incorrect. It'll change from invalid username to invalid password. And probably the size of the page will be different. And perhaps the status code will be different. <coughs> and it's up to 57 of these. Uh, here's a progress bar on the bottom, 59 of 101 and so on. So we'll let that go. And we may really not have to do them all before we get lucky. Let's just sort by length and sort by length again. Okay, there's, they're all the same right now, but we're only up to 64, so it won't take too long for it to get up to 100. By the way, you can examine each one of these completely, just like in the other tabs of BERT. You can click one of them, and you can look here. So I might look to see if it worked. It's supposed to use a username of root, and it did. It put a username of root. The password is always B, but it is filling in the, each one of these with root. This is... Um, admin, and so on. So that makes sense. And uh, here, oh, one of them looks different, 3250. Ah, look at that. Most of them are 3248, but this one is 3250. And if I look at the response here, and I could render it so it looks like a browser, uh, now, it says incorrect password instead of incorrect username. So now I know the username is app one. Okay. So that the first half of my attack has worked. Now I know the username. So I'm done with this. I'll close it. The username is app one. So I go back to here and I'm going to make the username always app one, not a variable. And now I'm going to vary the password. So I highlight that and add section marks. Now I need to get the list of passwords, which is, those are the usernames. Here's the passwords. So I copy all of them. And I'm all set to go here. Payloads. I just want to clear that and paste in the passwords. And now start the attack and agree that it's going to run kind of slow. And there it is going. So now I'm, uh, I've got exactly the same situation. It's trying those 100 passwords. And when it gets it right, I'll get a different status code or a different length. Probably a different status code. Normally, when you succeed in authenticating, you get a 302 redirect to go to some page, which is the authenticated page. But it might just be that you get a different length, too. And you see I'm already a quarter of the way through. So it won't take too long to find the right password. And one great thing about this, I mentioned before, each student is working in their own virtual, in their own container, which is running their own web server. So they're all going to find different answers and they're not going to be able to interfere with each other and such. So that's why this is a nice professional learning environment, much better than the ones I've made. When I go to DEF CON, I often hang out with the Wall of Sheep people, and they've made a, a product which they sell to the military. 
that spins up network training exercises intended to be attacked with Wireshark, where you analyze network traffic, and it's the same thing. It spins up a custom container for every uh, every person learning to practice analyzing a network track and network traffic and attacks on that machine. And everybody gets a different one, so people can't cheat and all that. Nice and professional. Up oh, there it is, 302. So the password is six sevens. So uh, it's app one and six sevens. So I don't need to continue the attack. And I should be able to log in with that. So let's go to the lab here. I should be able to log in as app one. And the password should be 777777. And I'm in. Okay. So that's why this is fun. That's a successful authentication attack. So those are good, clean fun. Um, and students always like that one. I'm going to stop that recording.